Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. Well, it's not Sabbath, is it? It's Sunday. My gosh. Have mercy. The blessings are still going on. So, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the service. At this time, we'll just say a word of prayer to just um, invite the Lord's presence. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your awesomeness. We ask that you abide with us as we celebrate and we worship, and we ask that all things done is to your name's honor and glory. We love you and we praise you, and we look forward to the wonderful blessing you have in store for us tonight. Amen. joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praises. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You can sit down now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Menelik Eristi, and I would like to welcome you to the 35th Annual Camp Meeting Youth Service of 2022. This year's theme is Living by Faith. I'm so excited that you have chosen to join us this evening as we fellowship together, worshiping our Heavenly Father. May God renew, restore, and reestablish our faith as we continue living for Him. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. God bless you all. Thank you. It's not. Test one, two, there we go. Isn't our God awesome? I feel like a soldier today. Standing in the army of God. It's so got a hold of the blood stain, man. It's got to fight. Come on, sing it with me. Yeah. 
to find although Now speak about yourself. Sing, I am. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I have my hand on the gospel. For one day, I got all the good and fight anymore. I said, stand up and fight anyhow. Oh, we are soldiers in. To fight, although oh 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 How many of you can answer the question, How great is our God? Nobody's going to attend? I mean, that is the question. How great is he? We don't, we don't know how great he is until he shows us, until he moves within our life. Listen. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice Wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide beginning in this voice it trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me sing with me how great is our God Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. And how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great. How How great, how great, how great. 
You will join me in standing as we sing our theme song.
and just sit it in sit it in majesty oh God you are you are the reason amen you may be seated you may be seated our God is risen, he is alive. Anybody believe that our God is risen and he is alive, that we serve? We serve a living savior. That's how they used to tell us back in the day. We serve a living savior who's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him, he's always, oh, I guess, it's, I, I guess I'm the only one who knows the hymn. Because I see, I see some of us, we, have, uh, we come from various different generations. So maybe, hallelujah, we have won the victory. It's too much for you, or you don't know that one. But surely we all grew up proclaiming and declaring that he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. Come on, anybody else know the right? Yeah. It's all right. Y'all lack funny. You can act funny if you want to. I, 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 knew, I grew up on those things. I don't mind a little contemporary song. I love a little contemporary song. Aaron Rattery and Jonathan Tanker both know that about me. But I cannot lie. I cannot deny where I came from and what I was brought up on. And before there was anything and anyone talking about Maverick City, there was a hymn. And so we praise God for some of the foundational things that kept us, that kept us, and see, y'all ought to praise the Lord that you, you have a, that you have an organ and that you have a drum. Some of us remember we didn't have none of that. <laughs> and all we had, you talk about a praise team, all we had was a chorister. Anybody, anybody remember the chorister? <laughs> the chorister sang up there and all they could do was this. <laughs> and you thought that they were doing, they thought they were doing something and we didn't know. And I, I grew up wanting to do that myself, just standing up there waving my hand thinking that I knew music. But uh, we praise the Lord for how things have changed and grown and evolved and we pray that as we continue to see things change grow and evolve that we will be supporters come on and say amen, amen. that we will be supporters of things that change and grow and evolve as dr manders is fond of saying we stand on the foundation of many generations but the thing we must realize is that people are standing and if you are standing that means you are building up from you're not staying the same and so while the music may be a little louder than you used to, while you may have a little bit more instruments than you remember, and, may, and there may be a few more people up there than you, what you grew up on, we ought to praise God that our kids are up here and they're not out there. We ought to praise God that they are shouting hallelujah and not shouting something else. Oh, man, see? Anyway, my name is Damon Hendrickson. Uh, I am the Associate Youth Director for the Bermuda Conference of Seventh day Adventists. I stand in the place of our Youth Director, Pastor David Steed. He'll be with us momentarily. We, so, we are so grateful for each and every one of you being here with us tonight. We recognize that there's anything that you could have been doing, but you chose to be here. And so we praise God for you, not just for you all that are in the physical room, but all of you all that are in the virtual room. That's right, you all that are in the virtual room. We know that we have a very large and wide and, and deep virtual following. And so we praise God for each and every one of you that are in the chat right now do your boy a favor if you would just put a shout out in the chat where you're from let us know where you're watching from because I'm sure that our people that are watching the chat want to acknowledge you want to thank you I know that we've been having people from all over the world tuned into camp meeting and we praise God for that but we also praise God for the rich legacy of the Hamilton seven day Adventist church where worship is a joy and the love is real and so we praise God for that and we are continuing on and thank you to each and every one of the support staff that are out here every night to make sure that this goes on. The folks who are in the sound room, the folks who run Easy Worship, the folks who monitor the chat, the folks who are on the camera, each and every one of you, the deacons who open up this building for us, we just want to say on behalf of our youth director, your pastor, but definitely on behalf of our president, Dr. Ken Manders, thank you so very much, Hamilton Church, for opening your doors to us so that we can have camp meeting here. Can we put our hands together for the Hamilton Church support staff? Thank you. Thank Thank you, thank you, 
thank you so very much. Listen, I got a couple things I want to share with you and I want to get out of your way. First, we want to remind you that we are going to continue on, that Dr. McKenzie is going to be with us for a few more days, and then he is going to pass the baton off. He's going to pass the baton off as much as he wanted to stay here with us the entire time. We could not be selfish and keep our union youth director to ourselves. He has other places that he must go minister. And remember, he told us at the beginning of our camp meeting that there were people who thought they that he was going to be there on their first weekend. But he said, no, I'm not leaving Bermuda. <laughs> and so he came to Bermuda on the first weekend, and he's going to carry us through to the middle of the week. At the middle of the week, he's going to hand the baton off to the associate youth director for the Atlantic Union. Do I have his, do I have him right? Pastor Teddy? South Southern New England Conference. That's right, Southern New England Conference. Pastor Teddy Williams, he's going to be here. We're so excited for him. He's going to be here. I've had a chance to meet and chat with him, and I know he's going to bring a powerful word to us. And so what I need you to do, what I need you to do, what I need you to do is as the week goes on, we don't mind all of you all that are in the virtual room, but as I say every week in my church where I stand, we are not out of COVID, but surely I've seen some of y'all in the grocery store. Can I get a witness? I seen some of y'all at the gas station. Can I get a witness? I seen some of y'all on the street. Can I get a witness? Please, please don't tell me that you were trying to be COVID safe when you were still moving out in the world. Surely you can come into the house of God and worship with us on this week. So please, please, please get Pookie, Ray Ray, your grandma mom them. Tell them it's going down here at the Hamilton Church like four flat tires. God is moving in this space and in this place. You want to be here for the rest of the week for our youth and young adult camp meeting experience. And then want to remind you at the end on July 3rd, we are going to once again partner with the conference Sabbath school department for the island wide uh, for the Island Wide Sabbath School Picnic in which we will be providing the games and the entertainment so it's going to be a good time and then remember that Pastor Steve keeps talking about this cop match, keeps talking about the Adventist cop match that's happening at the end of July I believe it's July 23rd 23rd, 22nd 22nd 23rd, 24th I've got all the days wrong. 23rd, 24th. It's the 24th. It's the 24th. Thank you, Elder Jamal. It's the 24th. And he keeps talking all of this, you know, because, of course, we know that even though he's in the central, we know where his allegiances lie. And although we stand in the central, you all know where my allegiances lie as well. And so we are looking forward to God doing a great thing and restoring the right order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Restoring order. He may not be able to do it in the real cop mesh, but surely in this first holy convocation. But we all come together. He can surely restore order in that way. And, and as we know, the, the, the east will rise. Amen. Oh, there's Pastor Steve. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> and so we want to remind you about that as well, man, that, that holy convocation that will happen there on the 24th cop match, the Adventist cop match. <laughs> the Adventist cop match where worship is a joy and the love is real. Um, that it's going to be a good time there. It's not your turn yet. <laughs> Um, and so we want to remind you about that. That's going to happen as well. There's so much going on this summer. We're very excited about what is going to happen here, not only in our conference youth department, but also in our local churches. Please, again, we encourage you to come on out, be a part of all the things that are going to happen on this time. Again, thank you to our wonderful psalmist, Sister Evelyn Good, Sister Evelyn Fordham Goodham, Goodman. Thank you so very much. And then, of course, we'll have our uh, speaker introduced to us later on in our program. At this time, we're going to invite our scripture reading to come up at this time. Thank you for the Pembroke Church and the Devonshire Church partnering to together tonight with our participants. Good afternoon. Today's verse is Genesis 29, verse 31 to 35 and it says when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved she he opened her wombs but Rachel was barren so Leah conceived and bore a son and she called his name Reuben for she said that the Lord has surely looked on my affliction now therefore my husband will love me then she conceived again and bore a son and said because the Lord has heard I am unloved he has therefore given me a son and also she, she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bore a son, and now this time my husband will become affectionate to me because I have given him three sons. Therefore, his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I'll praise the Lord. Therefore, she has called him Judith. And she stopped bearing. May the Lord have a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Our speaker for this service is Dr. David McKenzie. Dr. David McKenzie is, is a blessed as a preacher of righteousness, a husband and dad, a counselor, youth leader, writer, teacher, and an international evangelist. Throughout his 21 years of pastoral diverse pastoral ministry, Dr. McKenzie has served several diverse congregations across Guyana and the Northern Eastern Conference, where he also ministered as the conference youth director. He currently serves as the Adventist Youth Ministries Director of the Atlantic Union. His call to the pastoral ministry was refined as he articulated at the current University of Southern Caribbean. He later attended Andrews University. There he acquired Masters in Divinity, Masters in Counseling, and a Doctor of Ministry in Leadership degree. His dear wife and ministry partner is the lovely Dr. Bernice McKenzie, and the full equivalent comprises two children. He is a man of God to his core, a prayer warrior, passionate about service to others, and faithful and faithful to all things in his charge. His motto is, "All serve all, love all, honor God. Dr. McKenzie has a passion for souls and a pressure goal to enlarge the population of the kingdom of heaven. Simply put, he is God's man with a mission. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. It's a blessing to see your faces this evening. I saw some of you in town. <laughs> That's a blessing. This song says, in times like these, we need a Savior. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. In times like these, We need a Savior In times like these We need an anchor Be very sure very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock in time like this we need a savior in times like these we need an anchor be very sure be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock this rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure. very sure 
your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand oh, on the ground is sinking sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I said oh, all on the ground all on the ground is sinking and all of the ground is sinking sand. Somebody say hallelujah. Beautiful singing. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for such wonderful singing this evening. Good evening, everyone. Happy Sunday. I should say happy Sunday evening. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited not only for those of you who are here in person but your pastor one of your youth director uh, pastor steed informed me that we have had some 6,000 views on Sabbath and then another set uh, in the evening we are having thousands of people online so we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us this evening and for those of us who are in person May the Lord continue to bless you. Uh, Director Hill, may the Lord continue to bless you. Now, I promise you to share out a few gifts. Uh, one of them is this devotional. And I want to tell you that this devotional is changing lives. I've written a number of them in this book. Uh, we have conference presidents who have written a number, uh, youth directors, and these have been a blessing. One woman said to me she came to me and she said pastor my son seemed to have been going astray i tried many things many times talking to him and he would not listen and i just stuck this in his suitcase as he was going to college and she said after reading this devotional my son is a changed person somebody say amen so i want to encourage you we have hundreds of them Advent Source, they're published there too. And I want to encourage you to get one. Who walked into this to the church first this evening? You are the first youth, first young adult or young at heart that walked into the sanctuary today. Come forward. Come wherever you are. Come forward and receive this devotional. Somebody say amen. All right, so since no one is coming, then I guess everyone came in at the same time. Why not let us ask the little 
uh, the little girl that read the scripture reading to come forward. Maybe she and her family can read this. Somebody say amen. Where is this little girl? A beautiful, beautiful uh, young little girl. I should say a young lady, not a young girl. Thank you so much. All right. Do you read? Say it, let him hear. Yes. Hallelujah. Enjoy this devotional. Amen. And read it with your family. All right. God bless you. Take care. God bless you. I also promised a free international ticket to the uh, Pathfinder Campery that is on its way. Everyone is preparing. I visited Wyoming a few uh, months ago to see the campground to make sure that Atlantic Union will be uh, safe and be able to enjoy the camp. And I tell you, it's an amazing campsite. You can't afford to miss our international campery. So I have a free ticket for a Pathfinder who came in here. You brought visitors with you. Sorry we can't give online to the thousands of viewers. But do we have a Pathfinder here tonight who came? You brought someone with you. You brought some friends. Let us see who, who brought the most uh, individuals to the service this evening. Stand wherever you are. You come, come forward. You're a part finder. Let me see how many individuals you brought with you tonight. Receive your free international campery ticket. Pastor Steed will ensure you give me your name and the tickets will come to Pastor Steed and he will get it to you. Where is this part finder? All right, so there's no part finder, Pastor Steed. I know they are on the other, the other venue maybe, but no part finder here. All right, so tomorrow night we're going to call again. All right, we're going to call again. I notice someone wants to move. You're a pathfinder? Oh, we have in the balcony. Yes, one up here. One up here. Where's this pathfinder? How many individuals the pathfinder brought? Where, where's the pathfinder? All right, now pathfinders move, move, they move quickly. So if I count up to three and that pathfinder is not here, then the pathfinder is not coming. One. <laughs> Hallelujah. Two. Now I tell you, these pathfinders move quickly, man. They're here be before I got to three. Hallelujah. Who's the pathfinder? Which one of you is the, you are the pathfinder? Come forward. Come, come, come. What is your, what is your, your friend's name? Ty. Ty, thank you so much for coming tonight, okay? So you have won yourself a free ticket to the International Campery. Put your hands together for this part. Find everybody. All right, Pastor Steed, we'll take your name and show you give your name and your contact so that Pastor Steed will get the ticket to you, okay? Hallelujah. Youth, young adults and viewers, I can't wait for tomorrow night. I'm enjoying this pulpit every every time I step into this pulpit I feel better and comfortable and feel like preaching even more somebody say hallelujah the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and upon you and in this place and so tomorrow night tomorrow night is a special night we want to entitle the message tomorrow night it's at the altar it's at the altar by faith it's at the altar you can't afford to miss tomorrow night then i'll be back again on tuesday evening and on wednesday evening and then pastor teddy williamson will be with you on thursday evening friday and sabbath the message this evening is entitled praise of faith what is the message this evening everybody praise of faith turn to the person next to you if you're seated next to someone and say praise of faith why not stand with me for a few seconds wherever you are and turn to the book of Genesis chapter 29 Genesis chapter 29 and we're reading from verse 31 Genesis 29 from verse 31 hallelujah let's read together everyone 
And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord hath looked upon my afflictions. Now therefore, my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined to me because I've borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. The message today, praise of faith. Every head bow and every eye close. Father, speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Before I commence, I've noticed our president, Dr. Manders, walked in. And we love our president, Dr. Manders. Just before I speak, why not say hi to your congregation, your youth and your young adults. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for our very own youth director of the Atlantic Union Conference in the person of Dr. David McKinsey. Thank you, sir, for looking over your flock. He could be in any of the other six conferences, five conferences, but he is with us at our annual camp meeting. Come on, put, let's celebrate the man of God. What do you say? And uh, thank you for your leadership and the work that you do for our young people, all in season and out of season. And um, I'm going to turn this mic over to you because you're ready to preach. And so I just want to thank God for you, our young people, and your faithfulness to God. Be faithful. Trust him when you can't trace him. And through all your brokenness, he will bring you through, through the crucible. And if you keep your eye on him and follow him, trust me, he can do marvelous things with you. And you will never be disappointed in having faith in God. God bless you, young people. And uh, may the Lord bless our experience as we worship him tonight. In the name of the Lord be praised. What do you say? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Preach the word, preacher. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for our beloved president one more time, everybody. Our brothers and sisters, when your president can take time off and come and sit with you and worship with you, we ought to give God praise. Presidents are busy, very busy. And right now, ensuring that camp meeting across this island goes smoothly is a challenge, but God has blessed our president with success and a successful team. And brother president, we are praying for your dear wife. Hallelujah. I said we are praying for our president's wife that the Lord will continue to touch, heal, and strengthen. And so the message today, praise of faith in keeping with our camp meeting theme, living by faith. Praise of faith. Just read the passage from Genesis, Genesis 29, 30 to 31. Now let's get into the word. 
You know, there is a nursery rhyme. I don't know. Do you love nursery rhymes? Have you learned nursery rhymes, young people and young adults, when you went to school? Did you? Uh -huh. If you remember this one, maybe you can say it with me. Pussycat, pussycat. Where have you been? I've been to London to see the Queen. Pussycat, pussycat, what have you seen? I've seen a mouse under a chair. All pussycat saw in the whole of London was a mouse under a chair. Pussycat did not see the Queen's palace. Pussycat did not see the ground where Brian Lara made 501. All Pussycat saw was a mouse under a chair. Youth and young adults, we see what we want to see. But I stopped by here this evening to tell you, let us see the positives in our lives. Too many of us, we all we see is the negatives. All we see is our faults. But youth and young adults, God wants you to know that you have positives. And he wants you to see the positives in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Jacob. Jacob, after fleeing from his brother, Esau, after fleeing for his life, that was wanted by his brother Esau. He found refuge in the home of his uncle, his mother's brother, Laban. Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the younger was Rachel. Laban had no problem finding a wife for Rachel, his younger daughter. For she was the essence of beauty. Uh, but Laban was having challenges and difficulties. Finding a wife for his older daughter, Leah. For Leah had a disability. Leah was twist eye. Can I pause here but for a minute? Young people, young people, listen to me carefully. <laughs> you need to think positively about yourself. It doesn't matter what disability you may have. You are special to God. I'll say this one more time, youth and young adults. It doesn't matter what disability you may have. You are special to God. And God can still use you. Moses had a disability, but God used him to deliver Israel. Somebody say hallelujah. You know, the other day I read a story that blew my mind. Listen to me carefully, and it's a real story. Story that blew my mind. An American tourist, an American tourist who purchased an inexpensive bracelet, necklace, sorry. Oh, this tourist saw this necklace that was not expensive in a thrift store, as you may, and and decided to travel from Paris back to New York. While coming through immigration, they stopped the tourists and said, we've got to see what you have to declare. And, and when they saw the necklace and they looked at it in the gift wrap, they said, you have to pay duty on this necklace. And when they looked at it and valued it, they, they said it valued among some, around some $25,000. And so the, 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 the tourist was amazed that it valued so much and got curious. And after the tourist left the immigration, went to another expert to value, to value the bracelet. And so the expert looked at the bracelet and said, 
uh, okay uh, they told you 25,000 but I'll give you 35,000 he said well, well well explain to me what what is the reason why this bracelet is so expensive and I paid almost nothing for it and so the, the expert took a magnifying glass and said look in as he looked through the glass looking through the magnifying glass he noticed an inscription and the expert said have you seen the inscription the expert said read it and the inscription read Napoleon uh, to Josephine <laughs> and so he said that's why this bracelet is so expensive the value of the bracelet came from its identification with a famous person you didn't get that <laughs> so let me go back the price paid the price paid for you establishes your worth <laughs> Ah, uh, you don't belong to yourself, youth and young adults. God bought you with a high price. <laughs> and get this straight, he did not pay silver. He did not pay gold. <laughs> he paid his blood somebody ought to say hallelujah the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power somebody ought to say hallelujah don't sell yourself cheap young people you worth more than silver or gold you worth the blood of Jesus Christ you are special it doesn't matter any about any disability you are important and special walk with your head lifted high be proud of who you are in Jesus Christ have a high self-esteem youth and young adults I just stopped by here today to tell you you are special Leah and her father. Leah and her father. Instead of relying on God to find the right husband for Leah, Laban and his daughter devised a plan to help God. To help God achieve her goal. To help God achieve her dream. To help God achieve her desire. To have a husband. Some people are having a hard time tonight. Achieving what they think is best for their lives. Do I have a witness? Some people are having a difficult time achieving what they think is the best thing for their lives. But I stopped by here today to tell our youth and young adults. God has a plan for your life. And he doesn't want you to help him. He wants you to trust him. Help me, Holy Ghost. I said God has a plan for your life. And he doesn't want you to help him. He wants you to trust him. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Leah and her father devised a plan to help God. Jacob expressed a desire to marry Rachel, the younger daughter. Laban agreed, but in his mind, he was thinking. Leah, my older daughter, will be left on my hands. He told Jacob, yes, I'll give you Rachel. But in his mind, he was devising a plan 
to deceive Jacob. The night of the wedding, he veiled it Leah and sent her in as the bride. Jacob thought he had gotten Rachel, but he had gotten Leah. Jacob was broken. He had to work now seven more years for Rachel. Jacob now had two wives. I said Jacob now had two wives, Leah and Rachel. The woman Jacob really loved was Rachel, but he was also married to Leah. The question now is, how did he manage both? Well, listen to this, youth and young adults. Jacob honored his marital responsibilities to Leah, but made no attempt to cover his preference for Rachel. Rachel, therefore, was the wife loved. While Leah was the wife tolerated. I'll say it one more time. Rachel was the wife loved. While Leah was the wife tolerated. My brothers and sisters... Sin has consequences. Nobody goes into sin and comes out clean. You always come out with some evidence that you were there. Is anybody listening to the preacher tonight? I said nobody goes into sin and comes out clean. There's always some evidence that you were there. Leah's, Leah's deceit came with a price. Leah now had to live in a marriage. Had to live in a marriage filled with unhappiness. She had to live in a marriage where she was now just tolerated. Do you know what it means to be tolerated and not loved? Do you know how it feels to be tolerated but not wanted? Do you know how it feels to be tolerated, my brothers and sisters? Leah, poor Leah was now in a marriage for the rest of her life, it may seem, where she was tolerated and not loved. But I've discovered one thing from this story. I said, I've discovered one thing from this story. You can be tolerated by man, but loved by God. God. You can be tolerated by man but find peace in God. You can be in a situation where you should not have been in a place where you should not have been because of disobedience but still have the blessings of God because God still loves you. Somebody say hallelujah. You can be where you should not have been sometimes not because of your fault but because of your enemies but I stop by here today to tell somebody God can still turn it around to become a blessing. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. You know the other day I read a story whereby I was talking about uh, in the northeast. In the northeast, what, what is important to the economy is what they called, they call codfish. Or cod fishes. 
Now they ship cut fishes from the northeast to different parts of the US and different parts of the world and it keeps the economy going. But they had a problem, they had a big problem. When they shipped the cut fishes, the folks complained that the cut fishes, they lost their flavor and their taste, even their appearance when they arrived at their destination. And so they sent back and they said, if you don't fix this, we will stop buying cut fishes from the Northeast. The Northeast called in all the experts and said, you need to fix this problem because we will lose, we will lose in our economy. The experts said, okay, we studied this stuff. This is what you have to do. You have to ship the cut fishes alive. Ship them in their natural habitat. Take the water where they came from and ship them alive to their destination. When they did that, got to the destinations around the world, the folks sent back and said nothing changed. The cut fishes have lost their flavor, lost their appearance, lost their taste, lost everything. And this is the last chance we are giving you. And so the folks called back the experts and said, you've got to fix this stuff. The experts went home, studied and came back and said, we now have the solution. You have to ship the cut fishes in their natural habitat alive. The Northeast said, you told us that already. They said, there's one addition. You've got to take the cut fishes enemies cat fishes and put the cat fishes in the tank with the cut fishes and ship them with their enemies ladies and gentlemen when they ship the cut fishes with the cat fishes the cat fishes chased after the cut fishes all the way through on their journey the cut fishes hadn't a moment or a chance to rest when they got to their destination the folks said these cut fishes are the best the flavor is the best the appearance is the best the cut fishes are alert they taste well why because of their enemies the point is this God can turn your situation around even with your enemies and turn it into a blessing it doesn't matter where you are or who your enemies may be if Jesus is in your life he can turn your situation around and turn it into a blessing from a curse. Somebody say hallelujah. Joseph puts it this way. He said what you meant for evil because Jesus is on my side. God turned it around for my good. I want to tell some young person here tonight. You may be in a situation where you may have messed up. But if you turn to Jesus, he can and turn your situation around and turn it into a blessing. Somebody say praise the Lord. Rachel, Leah, sorry, Leah and her father deceived Jacob and now Leah is in a marriage where she was just tolerated when Leah, listen to this carefully now. When Leah recognized that she was not loved but tolerated, Leah did everything in her strength for her husband to love her. She decided that I will take this upon myself. And I will make him love me. <laughs> Can I tell somebody here today? You can't do anything in your own strength. You've got to learn to rely on Jesus Christ. Some young man here tonight or viewing online. You may be battling drug addiction. You can't overcome that stuff in your own strength. You need Jesus in your life. Some young person tonight may be battling pornography. You can't overcome that stuff in your own strength. You need Jesus in your life. Some young adult may be battling self-esteem issues. You can't overcome that in your own strength. You need Jesus in your life. Yeah. Leah decided 
that she would do everything in her strength. I will take this on and I will get him to love me. Listen to this now. The Bible tells us that Rachel was barren. But Leah could have born children. Lord have mercy. And so Leah said, I will use my blessing for my own selfish motive to be loved. I want to tell somebody, you can't use God's blessings for selfish motives and selfish desires. God's blessings are to give him the glory. Oh, I did, you did not hear that. You see, many of us, we love to use what God give us so as to bring attention to ourselves, so as to lift our own self egos so as to feel better than we love the attention but I declare to you tonight that whatever God blesses you with is not for you to take the glory but for to give him the glory somebody say praise the Lord don't be like the foolish woodpecker I said don't be like the woodpecker the woodpecker flew on a tree with all the other woodpeckers looking at him. He was, the, he was the macho woodpecker. He flew on a tree and wanted to exalt himself. He whispered to the other woodpeckers, I could bring this tree down. He flew on the tree and he gave the tree three pecks and recognized that it was impossible to bring that tree down and the other woodpeckers started to laugh at him he flew on a tree nearby and he pushed his head beneath his wings in shame and embarrassment because he just boasted that he could have brought this tree down then suddenly, while he had his head between his wings under his wings lightning flashed Thunder rolled and a, and a lightning bolt struck the tree from nowhere and the tree came tumbling down. All the woodpeckers were startled, even that macho woodpecker. And then he shook his head, looked at the other woodpeckers and said, who would have thought that three of my pecks could bring this tree down? He took the glory. I want to tell somebody all glory glory belongs to God. He alone deserves the praise. He alone deserves the glory. Give God what he deserves. My brothers and sisters, Leah said, I will take the blessing God give me and I will use it to have my husband love me. Oh, my brothers and sisters. She rushed on then and she said, Leah, Rachel, she said, she can't bear children. So I will bear children and my children will cause my husband to love me. She rushed and she made a son and she called his name Reuben. Reuben in Hebrew means God noticed my troubles. And she said, now my husband will notice me. You see this thing called notice? Too many of us want to be noticed. Are you listening to me? I see folks dress in certain ways just to be noticed. I want to tell somebody here today, you don't have to fight for somebody to notice you. If God wants you to be noticed, he knows how to do it. Somebody say hallelujah. You just got to trust him. She said, I will. Now my husband will notice me because I, I have Reuben. But the Bible tells us she was still tolerated. She rushed again with a broken heart. And she made another child, another son. She named him Simeon. Hmm. In Hebrew, Simeon means God heard. She said, no, my husband will love me. 
But the Bible tells us, my brothers and sisters, she was still tolerated. Her heart was still broken. She said, what else can I do for this man to love me? She said, I'm going to make him another child. She rushed and she made another child. And she named him Levi. In Hebrew, Levi means a Attachment. And she said, now my husband will become attached to me. But my brothers and sisters, she was wrong. She was still tolerated. Is anybody here tonight? You doing whatever you could do so as to escape the consequence of your sins. I want to tell you tonight, nothing can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You can't work your way out of the consequences of your sins. You just have to give it over to God. Somebody listening to me. She was still being noticed. Not being noticed. Still being tolerated. Because she was working in her own strength. And then one day. We're going to close it here now. And then one day, it dawned on her, God has been good to me. The main fact, I still have health and strength. God has been good to me. I, even though my husband doesn't love me, God has been good to me. She said, I don't have man's favor. But what I've realized is that I have God's favor. I don't have man's love. But I have God's love. And that's all I need. Because if I have Jesus, I have everything. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Oh, he said to Moses, he said, I am that I am. In other words, Moses, whatever you want me to be, I am. I am everything you want me to be in your situation. I'm your bridge over troubled waters. I'm your bread when you're hungry. I'm your water when you're thirsty. I'm your doctor in the sick room. I'm your lawyer in the courtroom. I'm your peace in the midst of storms. I'm your money when you're broke. I'm your refuge in time of trouble. Whatever you want me to be, I am. If I have Jesus, I have everything. Tell your neighbor, if I have Jesus, I have peace. If I have Jesus, I have joy. If I have Jesus, I have hope. If I have Jesus, I have health, high self-esteem. If I have Jesus, I am victorious because he has never lost the battle and will never lose one. He said a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. They that are with us are more than they that are against us. If I have Jesus, I have everything. She said, I have Jesus. I need to stop running behind this man to love me because I have Jesus. I need to stop running behind this man for favor because I have Jesus. Listen, she said from here on, I will stop looking at the negatives and I will look at the positives because God has been good to me. And so when the fourth child leaped in her womb. She said, you know what? I will call my son not, not a name to gain attention. Not a name to gain man's love. I will call him Judah. Judah means I will praise the Lord. In other words, in the midst of my toleration, I will praise the Lord in whatever situation 
I find myself I will praise the Lord it doesn't matter what people do to me I will praise the Lord even if my back is against the wall I will praise the Lord even though my enemies are after me I will praise the Lord even if I'm broke I will praise the Lord even if folks talk my name I will praise the Lord in whatever situation I find myself I will praise the Lord and listen to this now when she changed her attitude young people you've got to hear this ah, young adults when she changed her attitude from one of murmuring and complaining and criticizing herself when she changed that attitude and she said I will just praise my God it doesn't matter what comes my way I will praise you Lord it doesn't matter whether this man loves me or not you love me so I will praise the Lord it doesn't matter Lord I just keep praising you you do what you please with my life and I will give you the praise ladies and gentlemen after she decided to praise the Lord look what happened her situation took a turn Woo. the Bible tells us that God decided to bless her in her situation that it was unbelievable listen to the blessing before we go home I might as well just hold my Bible to go home now listen to the blessing God moved her from being a woman that was disrespected to a woman that had to be respected God moved her from being a woman that was not wanted to a woman that the whole world the whole world is talking about how did he do it this is what he did he took her six sons and made them patriarchs of Israel now you did not get that so let me take it a little further because when you start to praise God he starts to bless you even more he caused her son to be half the patriarchs of Israel hold on God is still blessing six of her sons became half of the 12 patriarchs of Israel if that's not enough God said I'm gonna bless you even more because you just keep praising me you can't stop praising me so I'm gonna bless you even more the Bible tells us Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us he's preparing new Jerusalem for us and I read that Jerusalem has 12 gates and the 12 gates are named after the 12 tribes of Israel it means that God used her in the midst of our crisis to name six of the 12 gates of New Jerusalem somebody's ought to say oh amen can I tell you now in the midst of your crisis stop complaining and start to look for your blessing it means that God is allowing you to go through what you are going through because he is blessing you stop focusing on the negative and say God what are you doing for me in the midst of this crisis my brothers and sisters she named six of the 12 gates of heaven I can't wait to get to heaven I read that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father God he 
he's interceding for you and for me he has on a priestly robe but one day I said one day he's gonna take off the priestly robe put on the kingly robe turn to angel Gabriel 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 gather the angels together it is time to go and bring my children home angel Gabriel will call all the angels together what a day it will be they will line up with their trumpets then angel Gabriel will push heaven gates open and Jesus I said Jesus he will take the lead the clouds will be rolled back like a scroll right on King Jesus right on no man can hold thee back right on King Jesus right on the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air we we'll wing our way to paradise when we get to heaven what a day of rejoicing it will be there will be 12 gates I don't know which gate you will go through but there will be 12 gates I just stopped by to tell Bermuda regardless of what gate you decide to go through just go through a gate and remember that there are names on those gates names that came out of trials names that overcome problems names that went through fires names that walked through waters names I said names that were weeping names that were crying tell your neighbor if those names can be the names of the gates then I could make it to heaven because I'm a sinner saved by grace tell your neighbor I'm worthy because Jesus is worthy it doesn't matter what I'm going through I've made up my mind to go through again young people youth and young adults I don't know what your struggles are but I stopped by here today to tell you you need to live a life of praise I said just live a life of praise regardless of what people say about you regardless of what you're going through just live a life of praise and remember remember God will be preparing you for heaven and heavenly stuff in the midst of your tribulations and so go through it praising the Lord I want to pray for somebody here tonight I want to pray for somebody young people I don't know what you're going through but I want to pray for you maybe you want to say God I need I need I need my self-esteem to be lifted because now I know that that I was bought with not silver and gold I was bought with the blood maybe you want to say you want to say pastor pray for me because I'm going through some rough times and I want to learn to praise God in the midst of it all so that God could bless me do you want me to do you want to pray tonight we have our president here do you want our president to pray for us tonight listen to this song and as this song is being sung I want you to meditate on these words and then our president will come forward and he will pray for us that the Lord blesses us in the midst of our struggles. God Amen. bless you. Let's sing this together. It says praise meditate him. Meditate on this song. Praise him. Let's praise him. Let's practice now. Come on. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Everybody say praise him, 
praise why don't you praise him oh he's worthy he's worthy praise him hallelujah praise him jesus jesus bless his savior he's worthy to be from the rising of the sun from the rising of the sun unto the going down unto the going down of the somebody say he's worthy he's worthy jesus is worthy Lord, praise, hallelujah, praise him, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, bless his Savior, bless his Savior, he's worthy to, God is my rock, come on everybody, God is my rock. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, bless his Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. If you desire to have prayers tonight, why not stand wherever you are? Give God some praise. We're going to call our beloved president, Dr. Manders, to pray for the flock that God has entrusted in his care. Thank you, preacher. Let's put our hands together for the preacher tonight who poured himself out. What a mighty word we've heard tonight. I just want to say before I pray, just allow me a few seconds. I couldn't help but think that Many of us have felt rejected, have not found our identity. Um, you all, we all have our struggles. And I couldn't help but think of the, my, in my youth, Pastor Steed, in my confusion, trying to find my way, not being a church boy, but having the spirit of the living God in my life. God led me to a Hamilton church function that took place at Bernard's Park. I had dreadlocks on my head, ganja in my head, but the Holy Spirit was upon me. And, uh, you know, they didn't believe in baptizing Rastafarians in that day. Well, I never got the text message. And so I showed up for baptism anyhow. And the preacher was saying, should we do this or should we not? Yes, sir. And they said, let's just do it anyhow. Yes. Little did I know that the church board said no. But they baptized me anyhow. Yes. And the roster became a pastor of the same church that said, don't baptize him. I got in this church and some people said, you'll never be anything. I can't see you being a pastor. But I came back to the same church that said no to my baptism and became the pastor of the same church for 13 years. I just came here to tell somebody who may feel dejected and rejected. You may feel like Leah, the cross-eyed one. God has a plan for every life. Don't let anybody stop or block you. Don't even let yourself block you. I said God has a plan for you. And I want to challenge you right now to surrender your heart to Christ. 
Once you, once you fix your face like a flint, he will navigate you through life. If you keep your hand in his hand, he'll, he'll help you to fulfill the purpose for which you have been born. Any of the, our young people want to fulfill the purpose for which you're born, I want to challenge you to come out of your seat and just come walk down front. You want to fulfill God's divine purpose in your life. You want, to, you, you want your life to be a praise for the God that you serve. You don't want to live a mediocre, just coming to church, just going through the motions, but you want a life in Christ. Praise God for this young man today. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just, just, you may stand right where you are, but you may want God to put a special anointing on you to guide and navigate you. Anybody else want to come? Feel free to stand where you are. Praise God for you, young man. You want God to move in your life so that he can break every chain and, and set the captive free. Anybody else tonight want to say, God, I belong to you. I'm coming to you. Baptize me afresh and anew. I want to serve you all the days of my life. I want you to pray for yourself, but pray also for these young men as they make a strong stand tonight to say to Jesus, listen, God, I'm yours. I'm totally yours. So let's stretch forth our hands to the front and as we pray we're praying for ourselves that God will use us God has a plan for us we're not going to let anything stop or block that plan for us but we're going to see how God's going to move in a mighty way and one day we'll look back on this experience one day we'll look back on this camp meeting and say it took place tonight when I made my full surrender and so we come tonight father in heaven Nothing in our hands we bring. Simply to the cross we cling. We have just a tiny little minute. 60 seconds in it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. We will suffer if we lose it. Give an account if we abuse it. Just a tiny little minute. But somebody's eternity is in it. And it only takes one step towards Jesus. And he'll take a thousand steps towards you. Thank you, Father, for your word tonight. A liberating word. A word that sets captives free. We don't need to be somebody else's slave. We don't need to find our identity in the world. We, we are children of the Most High God. And we know that God loves us. Sent his son on a very expensive errand. He paid a debt that he didn't owe because, because we owed a debt that we could not pay. Thank you for the redemption that we have in Christ. Baptize us afresh with the anointing of your spirit. And we know it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. So we're going to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will navigate us. He'll be our GPS and he'll take us to our destiny. So cover us in your righteousness. Forgive us of our badness. Uh, help us to overcome our sadness. Give us joy, joy of the living God. And he that has the Son has life. So set us free in Jesus' name tonight. Thank you for the word. Thank you for your children tonight. May we leave here as sons and daughters of the King, anointed and appointed for our destination. Use us to make your name glorious and save us by your grace. And one day, when the wicked cease from troubling and weary souls are at rest, the meek shall inherit the earth. What a day of rejoicing that will be. We'll sit at the welcome table. We'll sing songs and never get weary. We'll shout and tell the story how we made it over. Free at last. Free at last. One day we'll be free at last. In Jesus' name, we claim it. We believe it. Let the church of the living God say amen. Put your hands together for the Lord in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. What's your plan? What's your plan? Praise Him. Come with me. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, Jesus. Bless His Savior.
Somebody say the name of Jesus. He's worthy, he's worthy of all the praise. Oh, we give you glory tonight. Oh, you're worthy of all the praise. Oh, he's worthy of all the praise. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, blessed Savior. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Come on. Can the church say hallelujah today? Oh, what a blessed time. What a blessed time. Thank you so much for coming by, Mr. President, and blessing us tonight. Thank you so much. What a blessing. What a word. What a ministry and song, man. What an appeal. What a time we have had in this place tonight. Hey, listen, I just have one announcement. I don't even want to get into a bunch of now. I just want to give you one announcement, and that is those Pathfinders are still there. If you want to get some burgers tonight, you can knock yourself out. Other than that, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. You know, at the beginning of these services, we just simply ask that you would show up. And Lord, you showed up in the preliminaries. You showed up when the when the singing as my as my friend calls it a singing evangelist sang you showed up when the preacher preached you showed up when the appeal was made you showed up again and the truth is without any of your presence here all of this would not have happened and so we just want to say thank you tonight thank you for your goodness thank you for your grace and thank you for showing up in this place tonight. For this is our prayer as we give you all the praise and glory. Let the saints of the living God say amen. Come on, say amen again. I'm going to hand this over to the president. Just repeat after me. Just turn to your neighbor real fast, and then the president's going to give you some remarks. But turn to the president, turn to your neighbor real fast and say, neighbor. Don't be afraid. Say it loud. Say, neighbor. Say, I'm hungry. Come on, just say it loud, say it loud. Say, I'm hungry. Mm. Say, say, I'm about to go buy me a burger. Mm. Oh, come on. Pastor Steed, I just want to say how each year, you may be seated momentarily. Each year I ask the Lord to direct me to a young person to help me to spread the word about camp meeting. And a student from BI willingly takes about 100 pieces of literature and they go out and they knock on doors and they invite people to the meetings. Um, this year we put the call out there and a young man from the Hamilton Seventh Day Adventist Church where worship is a joy and where the love is real answered the call. He took 100 pieces of literature he went knocking on doors in his own neighborhood. And I just want you to help me to celebrate Jalen Smith, a member of the Hamilton Church, who went out and take, taking that literature up there. Let's give, let's give God praise. He went out taking literature, unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what character building for the kingdom is all about. And I trust and pray that we won't be ashamed of the God that made you and has a destination for you. Come on and say amen. May God bless you, young people. Let's be faithful to him. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, God bless you, everybody. God bless you. you. All of you can just quickly stand and make your way quickly to the center uh, to quench your hunger, okay? Get on over there, man. Make that happen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening tonight. We love you. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. God bless. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you, man.